Good morning and welcome to worship. It is the second Sunday after Epiphany. God is good. All, all the, time. the time. All the time. God, God is good. good. Again, thank you all for joining us for worship here at St. James Lutheran Church this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this space, this time to worship, to reflect, and to rest. And so we pray, Lord, that as we worship, you would remind us that you are with us, not just in these moments of worship, but in every moment of our lives, when we need rest, when we need quiet, when we need peace and your presence. We pray that you will remind us that you are there. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you by love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. You only breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing, great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. We pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you
A reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Grant us grace to see the Lord present in thy holy word. Grace to The good news for this morning comes from John's Gospel. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Good morning, boys and girls. Thank you all for joining us for worship this morning. I hope that you've had a great week. I hope you're having a great morning so far. It's nice and bright and sunny in here. I hope you can see that from home. And this morning, I'm thinking about windows. As I look around the sanctuary, there are lots of them. And if you can picture the sanctuary, those of you who have been here before, then you know that the windows in the sanctuary are very bright and very colorful, and they're really cool. There's about six or seven of them and they all have colorful glass in them, and each one has a different picture of something from the Bible. When the, sun, when the sun comes in through the windows like it is this morning, it's bright and colorful, and it's really, really cool to look at. Now, look around you right now, wherever you are. I would bet that no matter where you are, somewhere nearby, somewhere you can see, there's at least one window. But I would bet the windows that are around you aren't like the ones in church. Your windows probably have clear glass in them, so they let the sunshine in, and you can look out them, and you could probably do this right now from wherever you're sitting, and you can see what's going on outside. 
Take a quick look and look and notice what you see. Windows let us see what's happening outside. In our Bible story for this morning, Jesus meets someone named Nathaniel for the very first time. Nathaniel is surprised to find out when they meet that Jesus already knows a lot about him. And when he finds this out, he learns that Jesus isn't just an ordinary person. Jesus is God. God knows you and me and everyone else on earth. God knows us because God has the power to see us, not just from the outside, but also on the inside. It's kind of like God has a window that can see into our lives all the time. So God knows if we're feeling happy or sad, even if on the outside we don't look happy or sad. God knows if we're excited or tired. God knows if we're feeling safe or secure or if we're scared. Just like windows help us to see out into the world, God can see into our hearts and our minds all the time. When Jesus met Nathaniel, he told him that he knew all kinds of things about him. And this made Nathaniel feel good. It made him feel like he was seen by God. It's the same way for you and me. God knows everything about us, and just as Jesus did not for Nathaniel, God promises to be with us every moment of every day. And so that's what I want you to remember for this week. God knows what's happening in your life all the time. Even if the people around you, even if the people from the outside don't know exactly what you're feeling or what you're going through on the inside, God does. And just like Jesus reminded Nathaniel that God was there for him, God does this for, it, for us in so many different ways. So that's what I want you to remember for this week, that no matter what you're experiencing, God is with you. And just like we look through windows to see outside, it's like God has windows to see what's going on inside of us. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for knowing us. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for reminding us that you are here with us. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are here with us in moments of worship, and you are with us in ordinary moments of everyday life. We pray, Lord, that you would remind us that no matter where we go, no matter what we do, no matter what we experience, that we never experience any of it alone, that you are with us. Even in those moments of quiet, when we retreat from the rest of the world, you are there. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So if I ever saw a fig tree in real life, I didn't know it. I've had fig newtons and I've had fig jam and I've eaten real figs, but if you were to present me with a lineup of different trees and ask me to point out which one was the fig tree, I am certain I couldn't do it. I don't know if I've ever seen one. You might know what a fig tree looks like, but I don't. But I can say this. I have sat under fig trees probably thousands of times. Nathaniel sits under the fig tree. Maybe he's deep in thought, wondering about the meaning of life. Maybe he's struggling with a deep and nagging question that he can't seem to find the answer to. Some scholars of the Bible have said that people in Nathaniel's time would go and sit under a fig tree when they studied the Bible. Maybe that's what he's doing. We don't really know. The author of John's Gospel doesn't tell us why he's there, only that he is, sitting by himself under the fig tree. And I've done it too, and I'll bet I'm not the only one. When I take a walk around the neighborhood around the church, because I've got a sermon to write but no idea what to say, that walk becomes my fig tree. When I drive out west, or at least to the western part of Rhode Island, and I pull on my waders, and I assemble my fly rod and step into the Wood River to go fishing, to do nothing else, that river and the casts that I make, the swirling pools that hold the promise of trout, that becomes my fig tree. Sometimes at the end of a long week, I find that I need a fig tree to sit under for just a little while, that quiet place. Sometimes it's just sitting at my desk for a few minutes. That's where I find the fig tree that I can sit under. I think you could find fig trees to sit under just about anywhere, and I hope that you have at least a few in your own life. The beach might be a great fig tree, as waves roll in and birds circle the waters and the shore. If you have a workshop that you retreat to, a place where you make things or build things or fix things, 
And if this soothes part of your soul, then that might be your fig tree. If you stand in your kitchen and you lose yourself in the dicing or the measuring and the mixing or the sauteing, if the smells of good food and the activity of making it feed not just your appetite, but something deeper, then that kitchen is probably a pretty good fig tree for you. Though I don't know what one looks like, I have found lots of fig trees to sit under over the years, and I've needed every one of them. Though we don't know why, it's clear that Nathaniel needed a fig tree to sit under for a little while. He found something in that place that he needed, and while he was there, God found Nathaniel. Can you remember the last time you visited one of your own fig trees? Does it happen often? Do you sit under the fig tree at least once a day? Have you found plenty of them over the years? Do you know exactly where they are, what they look like, and when to go when you need them? Or has it been a while? Have you struggled recently to find that place where you have the time to sit or think or wrestle with something? Have you searched but not found that perfect fig tree to sit under to gather yourself and your thoughts, that place like Nathaniel where you might find the rest you need, but also where God might find you? It's funny how God does that finds us when we need God. And sometimes this happens, sometimes when this happens, we might realize that we had been sitting under a fig tree without ever knowing it. Years ago, I used to visit a woman named Dorothy, a member of the church I was serving at that time. I visited Dorothy and her husband Peter in their home. I visited Peter with Dorothy when he became sick. Dorothy gathered her family and invited me to gather with them when Peter died. And later on, when Dorothy entered a nursing home and sometimes afterward entered hospice care, I visited her then as well. Dorothy had a chronic problem that made it hard for her to breathe. And as her condition progressed, it became more and more difficult until finally, it was nearly impossible. Near the end of her life, we would gather with Dorothy, his son and his wife, their children, and sometimes other family members. During her last days, we would play music that she liked. We would read Psalms and pray and we would hold her hand. At the very end, her son, who was named after his father, held her hand, gave her a kiss on the forehead, and told her that he loved her, and not long after that, she took her very last strained breath. As I left her room that afternoon, I was exhausted, emotionally. I was thankful that she was no longer suffering, but walking out of her room, I was drained. Her whole family was, too. Though we knew that it was her time to go, it was still hard, because it always is. As I walked to the exit of the nursing home, there was a radio by the door that was playing. And as I passed by, listening to the song, I was struck by the presence of God. The singer was singing about breathing. And you might know the song. She repeated a refrain over and over again, singing, just breathe. And in that moment, I realized that together, we had all been sitting under a fig tree with Dorothy and that God had found us there. If you were to ask Sherry about this, she would tell you that it was just another God wink, those moments when something feels like a really big coincidence, but it's not. It's God letting you know that God is there. Under the fig tree that day, I heard God singing, reminding me to breathe. But more than that, I heard God singing a song reminding me that Dorothy was breathing easy once more. After all those years and those last days struggling for breath, as hard as that was for her, it wasn't hard anymore. She was breathing again with God. Nathaniel might have been searching for something under his fig tree, and while he was, God was there. When Jesus meets him a little bit later on and greets him like he knows him, it's more than a God wink. It's the presence of God and the reminder that God was there with him under the fig tree, and it makes a big difference difference. There are fig trees all around us. If you need one, go there. It could be a long walk or a hike in the woods, or it could be simple, like a cup of tea or a quiet place all to yourself for just a few moments. When you need them, they're not hard to find, and you might find it's not hard for God to find you there. Jesus knew the presence of God better than any of us, and yet he still found fig trees of his own, up in the mountain to pray, by the lake shore, at the table, in the garden at night, and beyond the cross. It's there that God meets him, in the darkness of the grave, when the stone is rolled away, 
And just as Jesus had done for Nathanael, God finds Jesus, lets him know that he is not alone, and also lets him know that he can breathe once more. When you need a fig tree, even if you're like me and couldn't pick one out of a tree lineup, please know that they are all around you. There are plenty of fig trees to sit under when you need them, and there is one God whose promise is to meet you there. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our song of the day, uh, I Will Follow, is an invitation uh, to follow just as Jesus invited Nathaniel after this time of repose, after this time of contemplation, after this time of encountering the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Uh, he's invited to go and follow him, and we are as well. And so as we set aside this time for worship and for prayer, for being renewed in God's word, may we go and follow uh, as we bring the love of God, the hope of Christ, and our faith to the world uh, with whomever we meet this week. stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. In this life I lose, I will follow you. All your ways are good, all your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone, higher than my sight, high above my life. I will trust in you alone. When you go, I'll go. When you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. In this life I lose, I will follow you. Light into the world, the light into my life. I will trust for you alone. You're the one I seek. Knowing I will find all I need in you, Lord. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. In this life, I lose. I will follow you. I will follow you. In you there's life everlasting. In you there's freedom for my soul. In you there's joy, unending joy. In you there's life everlasting. In you there's freedom for my soul, in you there's joy, unending joy. Where you go, I'll go, where you stay, I'll stay, when you move, I'll move, I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love, how you serve, I'll serve, in this life I lose, I will follow you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. In this life, I lose. I will follow you. I will follow you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in these moments of worship, we give you thanks, and we pause to offer ourselves to you. We offer you the gift of our time, our energy, our talents, our treasures, our finances. We take all that you've first given us and we offer it back to you, Lord, knowing that you will do amazing things with it. And so we pray as we make our offering that you would help us to entrust all of it to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here I am, Lord. Is it Let us pray. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wide steward, wise stewards of earth, our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, that God console all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our neighborhood, for those joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the family and friends of Barbara Diaz, mother of Barbara Moore, we pray, Lord, that you would comfort all who grieve Barbara's passing, especially her daughter Barbara and her husband Gary and her family. We pray, Lord, that you would remind them that you are always present whenever death touches life with the promise of eternal life. And we pray that this would be a comfort to all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Amen. prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There are just a few congregational announcements, announcements this morning. First, I want to thank all of you for joining us for worship. I want to thank Steve and Rob and Betty for leading, help leading our worship, our live stream this morning. You can find us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. on Facebook Live and Zoom. Family Faith Formation, our Sunday morning Sunday school program, resumes today. We have two groups that meet, one at 10 with the younger children, pre-K through grade 2, and then another at 10.30 with children in grades uh, 3 through 6. If you did not get a chance to pick up your Family Faith Formation supplies, we have packets for the pretty much the rest of the Sunday school year available here at church. Please get in touch with me and we'll coordinate that. Confirmation, I believe, resumes this morning with 7th and 8th graders. That's every other week at 10 a.m., and Sherry leads that group via Zoom. Our Sunday school uh, 
program is also via Zoom. Uh, I want to thank everyone who made donations to St. James this week, no matter how you did it, whether you sent a check or if it was a direct deposit or by using the donate button on our website at stjames-ri.org. I want to thank all of you for your contributions. Coming up, our annual meeting is scheduled for February 7th. This meeting will happen via Zoom and there will be details to follow in congregational emails. Uh, please make a note of the date. The meeting's gonna happen on February 7th, probably around 10 a.m. and more details will come out uh, in the next week or so, but we will need at least 24 people to join us for that meeting in order to vote on agenda items. And the biggest one that we'll be talking about, maybe the only agenda item we vote on, will be our budget for 2021. And again, all of that information will come out in the next couple of weeks with our annual report. But if you could mark your calendar for February 7th, again, most likely around 10 a.m. after this service wraps up, we'll need at least 24 people to join us for that meeting. We are currently in the beginning stages of working on a plan to resume in-person worship, and our goal is to do this by Easter. The plan is, at this point, is to begin with an outdoor worship gathering, probably in our, our back parking lot. And Gail Feeney is putting together a team of people to begin working on this. If you'd like to be a part of the conversation, part of the planning as we prepare this spring to resume some kind of in-person activity, you can reach out to Gail or myself. The team has not met yet, although we do have several volunteers who are willing to help with that. If you'd like to be a part of that, or if you have questions, uh, please be in touch with either Gail Feeney or myself. Currently, our building will remain closed, but you can reach out to me via phone, text, email, Facebook Messenger, things like that. Um, and again, we appreciate you worshiping with us. Following the sending, Steve will unmute those of you who are joining us via Zoom, and you're welcome to stick around and visit with one another for as long as you like. Let us pray. Gracious God, we have gathered together for worship, and we have felt your presence. Help us to remember, Lord, that you are present even when we are alone, when we're searching, when we're seeking a place of rest, when we're looking for something, help us to remember that like Nathaniel under the fig tree, you are there with us. Even when we don't feel your presence, you are there. And so we pray, Lord, that as we enter into this new week, that you would fill each day and each moment with your presence. And in those moments when we don't feel as though you are there, we pray that you would comfort us with the knowledge that you certainly are. As we go, Lord, we know that you will bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go. Let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thanks for joining us this week. I hope that you have a great week. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let 
it shine, oh, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.